Hello everybody and welcome back to my Conjuration Tree Exploration with the Ordinator Burke Overhaul and his Sconner and his Dead Eye and his minions or at least one we should do a roll call huh I only see the two of them well anyway I hope everybody's doing well I'm doing great I'm back in my favorite game Skyrim getting ready for some frenetic legendary action uh, I think we said we were going to take on, um, what was it over here? Hag Rock Redoubt. And the extension to that, of course, is Dead Crone Rock. We're going to take on the whole thing. Um, even though the bounty is just for uh, the leader, which is probably a Hag Raven there. We're going to take on the whole thing. Um, so let's get started, shall we? Legendary. Um... Alright, let's start off with uh, a refresh of all our minions. Sorry, Frosty, go take a break. Stormy, you as well. Hey, where are you going? There we go. Is Oblivion going to take us here? Or do we have more minions that, uh, that are hiding from us? I'm guessing the latter. Oh boy, these guys are a real pain in the butt sometimes, I tell you what. We'll just refresh them anyway. Oops. This doesn't work. It's fine. Relax. Get away from me. Oh, relax. They're all very well trained, I promise you. And we need our Storm Atronaut. Okay, and since we're going to be largely playing outdoors in this next area, I think we should hook up some outdoor-only spells to uh, Spellscribe. Namely, for right now, Apocalypse. I also want to try Lightning Strike at some point. But I think we'll do Apocalypse this time. And we need Spellscribe. There we go. No, not enough magicka. Just let it fill up here. Oh man. It's a big spell, huh? This better cause some amazing damage for how much magicka that cost. Nazim. Oh, I want to kill him so bad. Oh, maybe later. I don't really feel like fighting the entire city guard right now. Plus, there are a lot of vendors here, and I like selling stuff. Okay. Well, let's go do it, shall we? Gotta be ready for action right away when you fast travel these places. Sometimes it puts you right in the thick of it. I can't wait to see how this apocalypse uh, spell looks with spell scribe. Oh, I lost my sword. Jamora Lords are still around, though. That's good. Ah, bear! That was scary. <laughs> Alright, let's keep moving. A bear came charging right out of the fog. That was amazing. Ah, now he's getting levitated. Not seeing any apocalypse happening yet. Oh, they're fighting without me. Uh, what's happening here? Did I go the wrong way? I feel like I took a wrong turn. Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, there's Apocalypse, and I died. Oh, no, I didn't die. That was a, that was a kill cam. Whew. All right. Apocalypse is kind of cool. Who said that? I can't see anybody. This weather is awful. There's no escape. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Oh, someone is definitely there. Okay, we're seeing that um, shock perk that's supposed to reduce enemies to 75% health on the first hit. It's finally working. Um, I don't know. I guess at this point, with how many perks we have running right now and all the active effects, it's just kind of luck of the draw whether or not it actually works. Um, who's shooting at me? Okay, let's just take another look at the game settings and make sure we are still on Legendary. Indeed we are. No tricks, just a super high level character. Which is fine for me. Okay, now we have a couple of indoor areas. Uh, if we've taken care of everybody. Let's just do a quick sweep here, make sure we killed everybody. Uh, and then we have to change our spell out for something that works indoor. Probably something that's not Electrosphere, because that was not my favorite. Wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Uh, I don't know what we'll switch to, but we'll, we'll take care of that in a second. I don't know where all my minions went, either. Luckily, with all the enchantments and the perks and everything that we have fleshed out... Um, we're able to do more stuff on our own without the help of our minions. But obviously with all the perks we have as well, we are much stronger with them around. And they are much stronger with us around, so it sort of behooves everyone to stick together. I don't know where they ran off to that time. They must have chased somebody down. Um, if we're playing at lower character levels, to where we don't have all these perks, we need to be sure that we're sticking around our minions. We need to keep track of them at all times. Uh, and make sure that we're close, because again, we feed off of our minions and our minions feed off of us. Okay, so let's take a look at the spells that we can use. See what we haven't used before on Spell Scribe. Chain Lightning, we've used it, we've loved it. Electrosphere, we used it and we did not love it so much. Evil Twin is a concentration illusion spell. I can probably remove that for now. Um, Fireball. Fireball might be fun. Cause some explosion damage. I'm not sure if that splash damage is going to affect us though, but uh, what better way to find out than to test it in an exploration uh, playthrough. There we go. All right, ready for an indoor area. Already activated. Ooh, my distorted shape didn't work there. Or it had just run out. Interesting. Uh, so that's going to be a problem. If we cannot count on um, Distorted Shape actually working, and that's the perk that says that when we enter combat with a um, with a Flesh Spell active, that we become intangible for, I think, 10 seconds. That's what allows us to um, remove ourselves from uh, aggression from our enemies, let our minions kind of take the heat, and then we can 
reposition ourselves uh, into um, in a one that is advantageous to us. Since we are still so very squishy, um, that, that's very important. If that just doesn't work sometimes, that's going to be an issue. That time it didn't, but I don't know. I might have been past the 10 seconds on that. Okay, we just triggered someone else here. And they're dead already. I don't know why I had to take everything else before that actually had focus, but whatever. May as well get some lockpicking levels here too. We still want some more perks for alternative play styles. There we go. That helps. Oh, looks like there's sometimes a prisoner in here, but this time not so much. I didn't want toggle free cam, I wanted toggle collision. Alright, how do I get out of here? Here we go. So we don't seem to be taking on too much uh, splash damage. Ooh, a Sorrow Tonto. It's a nice little blade. Um, so that's good. That uh, lets me hook up Fireball with a little more confidence that it's not going to kill us or our minions. Might still affect our minions. I don't know. Oh, and Connor's hungry. His killing Forsworn really creates an appetite, doesn't it? Uh, apple pie, charred skeever meat, sure, cooked potatoes, doing a lot of carb loading, and why not, we're going to burn them off, alright, there we go, uh, seeing a lot of spell research stuff pop up in uh, chests and level loot, uh, it makes me really excited to actually do a playthrough using spell research as our main method for unlocking spells instead of just going around buying them from vendors. Okay, so we have one more indoor area to get through before we come back out on top of this little tower here, and then we have a Hagraven to fight. All right, boys. And lady. Keep forgetting about the, uh, the gender of the flame Atronach. <laughs> that was kind of a funny effect. So that was that, um, levitation ability, uh, in our shock branch of our destruction tree that when we're aiming a uh, an electric damage uh, spell at an enemy they levitate in front of us um, it just it didn't it didn't kick in until after the kill cam had already started so that's why they kind of floated up in front of us for a little while before we uh, liberated their head from their body. Sorry, bear with me here as I collect alchemical ingredients. Porker tusks under CACO are alchemical ingredients. A little more incentive for killing the horkers, I suppose. 
I don't know if there's anybody else in the immediate vicinity that we have to worry about because I think they came running down when they heard all the explosions and stuff. So we should be pretty safe, at least in this area, until we unlock the, the gate in the next area. I think this goes out to a ledge where there's another chest. Oh, there's another Briar Heart out there, I guess. Who sees us? It's probably up there. Are they near? Do you smell weakness? Can I snag this guy? There we go. Knocked him off anyway. Uh, that's another thing that... Um, Fireball is good for it. Creates an impact, and you can use that to knock the soul gems off of the uh, off of their pedestals. Oh, we could use that soul gem though, can't we? You talking to me? Hope you're not talking to me. Oh, there was a flame trap there. Luckily, we are very resistant to elemental damage of all kinds. We'll take the alchemy levels. Who are you yelling at? Must be on the other side of that gate over there. The Oblivion Suplex. Connor must have a very strong uh, posterior chain or back muscles all the way down to his feet, uh, at least for his size. He's really able to, s to snap out those suplexes against people way bigger than him, so he's probably packing a lot of horsepower in that wiry frame. Oh, well that was anticlimactic. Pommel stone of Mayroon's razor, okay. I might take that on at some point. Um I like the Mayroon's Dagon quest. Uh the razor is a, a very cool Daedric artifact. I like it a lot. Um I'm just I'm struggling with how to work a dagger into this playstyle. It might be a little more useful if we're sneaky, and then we can do sneak attacks. Or it could be useful as sort of an offhand weapon for a dual wield playstyle. Um, but I'm having trouble seeing it as a, a, a main uh, strong hand weapon. Using it for our main... Um, means of, of damage output. Now I know that it gives you a chance of killing the enemy outright with one hit. With every hit, so that's good. Uh, and it has a very high rate of fire. You can swing it really fast. Um, but its range is really messed up and it looks it just looks kind of funny running around with a dagger in one hand and a spell in the other and just swinging that thing around like a madman. I guess it's not much different than what you're seeing now. We just have to get in closer, which is fine because that will cause more damage uh, with our with our lightning cloak. Have to think about it. Um, actually, I'm surprised that we were able to loot that, uh, that piece of the razor before uh, activating that quest. Seems odd, right? I thought that those didn't even exist until the quest uh, was active. Must have been wrong about that. Okay, so that was pretty quick. Do we want to do another one before we call it a day? Let's go ahead and quick save. And let's take a look at our... Um, 
quest list. Shall we take on Haldir's Cairn? I like that one. Let's go do it. 7 p.m., so it's getting a little late. Um, Connor's going to start to get tired soon. Um, but that's all right. It shouldn't take us too long. Uh, we do have a level up here, too. Um, I don't see Flame Atronach. I don't think Flame Atronach died. But we may as well go ahead and refresh our minions before we head in anyway. Um, let's go ahead and level up. We're going to bank the perks because we're pretty, we pretty much have everything that we really need. Um, two perks to play with once we start uh, doing an alternate play style here. I've been thinking about that a little bit. I think maybe what I want to do is uh, try Bound Battle Axe for a while. Um, and then maybe pair that with uh, the Boethia quest. Which is over here, the Pillar of Evocation and the Sassalum of Boethia. We're going to have to read uh, Boethia's Calling. We have that book over at Ryx End. We just have to pick it up and read it. Um, to start that quest. Uh, the reward for that is a heavy armor uh, set that under Zim's Immersive Artifacts, I'm not really sure what it does. <laughs> um, in previous uh, iterations, it's it's had um, sort of a flame shield attached to it. Uh, I think vanilla, it has a, a damage uh, over time effect if you're close, kind of like a poison damage and, and maybe a sneak buff to it. Um, I think that Zim had uh, had really oh, what was that? Like Knife Point Ridge or something like that. Anyway, it's over here somewhere. Um, Zim had completely redone that item in his uh, Immersive Artifacts overhaul. So, uh, I'm really not sure what it is in this iteration. It's been a while since I've used it. Um, okay, let's get our dudes in. Okay, Fireball was pretty cool with uh, Spell Scribe. It does a lot of damage, it does splash damage, um, and it also um, provides a means of causing ranged impact, which was nice. Uh, so now we know that that works well. Let's, let's see what else we have. Frost Nova, that should be fun. Let's give that one a shot. Oh, Frost Nova is not going to work because it's a uh, it's a self-targeted spell. I think cannot store concentration ground target or self-targeted spells. Eh, that's a bummer. I wonder if Lightning Strike. We're going to be inside. I wonder if Shock Nova is the same way. Yeah, it looks like Shock Nova is self-targeted as well. So that kind of limits our choices here, doesn't it? Um, we're going to be indoors, so we can't do Lightning Strike. Chain Lightning's always fun. Electrosphere I didn't like so much. Yeah, let's just do Chain Lightning again. Why not? I think that this would probably be our bread and butter spell scribe ability for indoor anyway just because um, we have buffs to lightning spells or shock spells and I think those apply to uh, spell scribe summoned abilities gotta get those alchemical ingredients if we're gonna get some more perks alright let's go kill some ghosts A uh, friendly tip here, if you're doing um, an alchemy playthrough, at least not using um, CACO, there is a ton of mushrooms in here, uh, particularly Imstool. Imstool is a super powerful alchemical ingredient, uh, at least outside of CACO. If you're not running CACO, Imstool is maybe the best ingredient you can get because 
It has a, a paralysis effect and a damage over time effect and just a straight up damage effect. So you can create ridiculously powerful potions that paralyze and cause straight up damage and cause damage over time. Um, and you can make a ton of them. Uh, you can actually take these in stool and plant them in uh, hearthfire planter boxes. So you can reproduce them and have like a ton of them on hand so you can make a ton of paralysis potions and uh, that itself makes you pretty invincible. Alright, we got some ghosts coming up here. And another level up, we'll take it. Any ectoplasm? Doesn't look like it. Now, you've seen me just console in gold, which I don't mind doing uh, in a series like this. I don't consider it cheating if your goal is just exploring perks and whatnot, but I am still looting people and I'm still selling that loot, uh, mainly because I want to still increase my speech skill and, uh, and get perks from that. Speech still is still counting toward our overall level, and we still do get plenty of perks off of that, so looting and selling is still very important. Where'd he go? Oh, <laughs> I levitated him. Gonna have to get used to that. It's a great effect, though. Another Draugr around here somewhere. Oh, he snuck up behind us. Or rather, we snuck up behind him. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this. I remember now. Okay, I hear a another Sky Shard. So we might be close to getting another perk. It needs to be Eagle. This one needs to be Snake. I think there's a chest in here. Ooh. <laughs> Jamora Lord still talking all kinds of trash. And I'm still picking up all kinds of trash, so guess I can't blame them. Black soul gems are valuable for this build, especially since we elected not to modify Azura's star. It's a free grand soul gem regardless of the level of the human that you've killed, or humanoid. Okay, no perk point for that one. I think we're only one off, though. I think we only need one more Sky Shard for our next perk. Jeez. 
Chain lightning. Love it. Okay, I think there's loot past this trap here. The other way that I just looked at that went up the stairs uh, is how to get to haul deer and finish out this dungeon. Oh, you assholes. <laughs> Alright, how far back do I have to go now? Oh, all the way at the beginning, huh? Ugh. Alright, I'm not going to make you watch this. I'll probably just cut through all this unless something super awesome happens. Okay, got through it. Um, the trick here is to just trigger the trap and get out of the way of the log before you go in. That is a huge weakness of this um, of this play style, this, this character concept, is that his summon minions do not have the Lightfoot perk. That would be a great patch to add at some point, um, but for now we don't have that, so they will trigger traps that you have jumped over or avoided. Uh, so you have to figure out other ways around those, or you might die. Okay. So here comes Haldir. This is a tough fight, um, but since we're so resistant to um, elemental magical damage, uh, it probably isn't going to be too bad for us. What I would really like to try to do is try to get some summons in here. I think that they may end up getting stuck behind this gate trying to force a one-on-one -on -one fight. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and quick save here. We'll see what happens. Uh, we may have to switch to uh, start conjuring Dramora Lords on the inside. Um, and Dramora Lords will be the ideal conjure for this because the, the Thralls, the Atronach Thralls, are master level spells that take forever to cast. So you don't want to do that in battle. Uh, the Dramora Lords are not master level spells, so they cast a little bit quicker and you are more likely to be able to get those out without uh, without taking too much damage or, or making yourself too vulnerable. Oh, and I crashed. Okay, let's get this started back up here. Game couldn't handle it. Looks like this build is broken in more ways than one. And we're back. Okay, so my fear here is that uh, with all the different effects that we have going on our character, especially like the levitation stuff, and all the different stuff that the, the Atronox can can cause uh, Haldir to go through, um, I'm hoping that's not conflicting too much with how complicated this, this fight is. So once you kill like the first version of Haldir, that one kind of disintegrates and then a new, uh, a different elemental version of Haldir appears and you end up having to fight him like four times, I think. Um, so I'm hoping that there's not a conflict between spawning the new one, despawning the original one, and the fact that, you know, I'm levitating Haldir in front of my face uh, the Storm Adrenoch is uh, paralyzing him, causing him to fall down, and, um, you know, so on and so forth. Um, so, we'll, we'll just see. Hopefully this doesn't crash over and over again. Alright, so far so good. Go ahead and quick save here. Oh, what's hitting me? Oh! That looked like an invisible hall deer. <laughs> oh, he's dead. Are we done? Is that it? That was really quick. This is usually a tough, drawn-out battle. Um, as you'd know if you've seen my Alucel series. But there is, well, we may as well take Reorange Drum. There's some cool stuff in the uh, in the Bard's College quest line. That's what that item is for. Um, 
he gives you... I don't know if it's a Radiant Quest because it seems like his drum is always found in this position, at least in my experience. So, um, Riorn is one of the bards in the Bards College, or at least one of the aspiring bards, one of the students there. And he sends you to go look for his drum, and somehow it ended up here. Um, so we might take on that quest, so I went ahead and grabbed on that, uh, grabbed, uh, that item. Um, okay, what next, what next? Is there a lever? I think there might be a lever up by that throne that drops the grating on, uh, on that pit. And then that goes down into the, that glowing pit below. How the heck do I open that thing? There's got to be a switch or something here. Is it the ruined book that I have to move off of there? No. Maybe it's just unlocked now. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I didn't have to go through that for a super long time. Okay, Haldir's Staff is a unique item. Um, it calms less powerful opponents for 66 seconds and traps their souls should they die. I don't know what exactly less powerful means. But, I don't know. It could come in handy for a lower level character. Alright, I think we're done here. Let's just step outside into the light, or I guess into the night at this point. Ah, we don't have to do that. I want to go around and, and pick all these mushrooms anyway. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for this episode. Um, I think we have pretty thoroughly tested Legendary and found that Connor is not lacking. Uh, we are quite strong. Um, that gives me a lot of confidence, and I, I'm pretty confident as well that we fully tested this. We've tested it against a lot of different enemies, um, a lot of tough boss fights, um, in a lot of different environments, and I, I think that uh, this, this character can handle pretty much anything we throw at him. So that's good. Um, I think next episode we are ready to move on to something else. I think we're going to start looking at the Bound Battle Axe, which will give us an opportunity for more leveling with uh, the two-handed skill tree. Um, and we might go ahead and take on the Boethia quest after that. That will uh, reward us with some heavy armor, and we'll start working on that skill tree as well. Um, we'll kind of start fleshing out an alternate playstyle using that stuff too, because uh, taking a two-handed weapon itself is going to weaken us a lot, and so is putting on armor. So we're going to need to figure all that stuff out. Uh, I think there are things that we can do to mitigate that at least a little bit. Um, but we'll talk about that next episode. For now, I am going to wish you well, and I will see you next time. Bye.